What would this babbler say? The French translation that we had in the choir was Que veut dire ce parroquet? What would this parrot have to say? Interesting. This is probably fairly close to what actually was said. And yet, he had the courage to stand up to mockery and was able to use, surprisingly, what they had. Saul of Tarsus could have remained within his own sphere of operation, brought up under the feet of Gamaliel, the Pharisee. But he was also somebody who, from Tarsus, had culture in the Greek sphere. He was a Roman citizen, and he had Greek, and he was using it. And he actually stood at the very place where he stood in Corinth, the Vema. It's in the marketplace, and he was there, using this natural pulpit, to hold forth against a place which was known for its corruption. There is a verb in Greek to Corinthianize. It means to misbehave. Well, this then was the chosen vessel of which the Lord spoke at his conversion to bear his name before kings and nations. And he was using what he had in his reserve. He was able to quote here even their own poets. Epimenides, we have here Epimenides, in him we have and move and have our being, and then Aratus, for we are indeed his offspring. This means that he is a man of culture, and that commands respect. Now, he also commands respect by not talking down to them. It's the secret. St. Patrick did the same, the Jesuits did the same in their missions. They used what was there. We, perhaps, would have something to learn from that. It's important when handling a soul to meet that soul where that soul is at. For instance, we are by chance in a conversation and we have the unknown universe of a soul right in front of us. What does one do? One stands in awe at the baggage of that soul. We don't know much about the soul. But we know that the soul is of the same structure as ours. Immortal, that is to say, never to die. It's actually not quite the same as divine immortality. It's Eve eternity, it has a beginning, but it has no end, it can't stop being, and therefore it's something to be in awe of. And it might be that divine providence has put us before that soul so as to adjust that other bit, the long bit, the eternal bit. Paul does that. He goes first to the synagogue and uses what he has there, his Hebrew baggage, and then he goes to these pagans. And it's the Oxford of the time. He uses, therefore, culture. Now, we have to be people of a certain culture. It's not good to come down a notch and to try and get souls by adjusting to their level completely. I mean bad words, vulgarity, bad jokes. One keeps one's dignity but one realises that actually that soul has a common ground that we can share. And already, if we get the soul on the human level, we can go further. The great gift that the Lord has given us for that is the sense of humour. It opens the heart. I remember as guest master, picking up very quickly how important it was to get into the culture of the person there. And there were many cultures coming at us and to us from all over Europe and indeed the world. I remember one time there was a guest house full of girls from the community of the Arca. It was one that recuperated drug addicts. They came every year. And this guest master had to handle all these people. So I remember having 
these girls before me and I thought, what can I do here? So I found something which worked immediately. It was the common baggage of some songs known all over Europe. And I got one of the girls there and we sang a duet of Yesterday for McCartney. It worked very well because it got their confidence. But the optic was to get their confidence so as to work on them on a higher level. Inviting them to a life of grace. They were already being saved from the dark world of drugs and they could go further. And we got them to do that quite often because they felt they weren't judged. They were met where they were at and they were respected because a drug addict loses a lot of self-respect. And so respect is the first key and Paul gives us the example, the model. With regard to culture, it's kind of important specifically in the pastoral sphere. If a pastor of souls has a culture below the level of his people, he's at a great disadvantage. He can't presume that his priesthood will command him the attention and respect that it might. He has also to have to command respect on the human level. And it's not good either that the people should be on their catechetical level at a far lower level than the professional level. We need to be complete people. And a complete person is able to talk to any person about anything. As again Paul says, all things to all men. It's a gift. It has to be there. And the key is respect. A soul that is not respected immediately closes up and we can't do any good to that soul. A soul that is met on equal terms. And by the way, that is not a lie, it has to be authentic, because a soul is a gem. That soul reacts differently. In Ireland we have, for instance, the travelling community, but they're all hidden gems to be saved. One should never categorise or look down to a single soul. Each is made by the same God, and we're not superior. And if we think we are, we're immediately inferior because we're sharing in the error of Satan. Pride. Paolo, potrebbe essere ancora Saulo, fariseo. Invece era uno strumento scelto da Dio per operare anche in altre culture. Da Tarso aveva questo bagaglio ellenistico la lingua, la cultura greca e Atene, l'Oxford dell'epoca, ha saputo agire sulla cultura e usare la cultura pagana per contattare, comunicare con la gente a loro livello, citando anche i loro poeti. È un segreto. Avendo, avendo davanti un'anima, si incontra l'anima con le cose conosciute condivise l'esperienza umana, la cultura che porta. È un'anima completa, è un'anima che sa usare quello che c'è di comune e adattarsi a qualsiasi anima e a qualsiasi situazione senza abbassare il suo proprio livello. La vulgarità, per esempio, va esclusa. Ma uno comincia con le cose condivise e comuni, con i bimbi, con i poveri e anche con le persone di grande cultura, saper dialogare in maniera intelligente e poi usare questo come un punto di partenza per una cosa soprannaturale. L'ottica è sempre, come San Paolo, salvare l'anima immortale. Perché non siamo superiori gli uni agli altri. Abbiamo lo stesso creatura creatore che ha dato anche doni ad altri che non abbiamo noi e dunque il contatto si fa con rispetto e l'anima che si sente rispettata si apre un dono che funziona sempre è il senso umoristico perché apre il cuore ma anche il dono di saper essere interessato 
all'altra persona la sua realtà come è ascoltare e scoprire il mistero di un'altra anima perché questa altra anima anche è immortale come noi non morirà mai ha un inizio ma non finirà mai si chiama questo l'eternità un inizio ma non una fine e ogni anima è un gioiello da salvare là dove è Cristo risorge Cristo trionfa Cristo